wake up and listen. Howdy folks, Lisa here at Everything is a Lie. Just having a look, because this is a great representation, um, at some Simon Fieldhouse artworks of town halls in Australia. Here we have Adelaide, Sydney. These are just amazing drawings. Give you a good look at town halls in Australia. Melbourne none of these are what I want to talk about but just to give you an idea of say such similarities between buildings except for Perth Perth is slightly different we'll talk about that another day Brisbane Malvern keep going Sydney Opera House no 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 Waterloo where are we there Melbourne this is the one we're going to talk about today. I'm not sure what that's about. The first one we looked at had a witch in the top corner. Collingwood Town Hall. So I was watching, I keep an eye on the National Film and Sound Archives, NFSA, to see what comes out. And this popped out a week or two ago, Solid Plastering, Artisans of Australia. Now I won't play it for you and I'm not gonna risk any copyright issues, but basically here he's working on the urns on the top of the building. So wait, up, let's open this up. What a beautiful image. So the urns all across the top, as we see in a lot of these buildings with the knot flag poles and the metalwork, Were these urns there for some other purpose? I can't tell you yes or no on that. There's a lot of stuff out there that suggests that they are. These guys are just basically recasting them in concrete and restoring a building. So looking at Collingwood Town Hall on Wikipedia, it was built between 1885 and 1887. Of course, competition winning, George R. Johnson. He was the fake architect responsible, apparently. And when they couldn't match the building, they moved on to another, let me see if I can find it. They moved on to another town hall, which is also here somewhere. Where are we? Brunswick, Sydney, where are you? I can't see it. North Melbourne. Wait on. North Melbourne. South Melbourne. Where are you? Anywho, they used North Melbourne Town Hall. Maybe he didn't do North Melbourne. I'll get us a picture of North Melbourne. He used the North Melbourne Town Hall to recreate these urns. Now, the interesting part about the video is he says when you add up all the years uh six months i think he said in the planning they were at the six year mark or something when the video is um, being made or something and it still takes another year and a half so i i didn't get the full length of term of the renovation but to basically recreate all these parts that were missing into restoring it to, it to its former glory took them something like seven or eight years yet it was built in only two years so they've only got like a team of four or five men so assuming that we were building this in the gold rush nonsense as they tell us um, massive building boom how many teams did they have on it to create that kind of building in two years so taking a look at um, the fake architect, George Raymond Johnson, 
Uh, it clearly stipulates somewhere in here, let me find it. He may have gained clients through Masonic connections, though many commissions came from competitions. So he had a lot of free time, even though, you know, to enter competitions, even though he was busy working on several other buildings at the time. Also an interesting note, I won't go through his whole life, there's no need, and you can look if you want. Um, he died early, he died at only 58 of septicemia at sea uh, and left only 150 pound behind. So virtually, um, you know, 150 pound back then was still quite a bit of money. But considering uh, only a couple of years before he'd had a big payout for an injury of, there it is, 2,481 pound, uh, he died a poor man as well. So thanks to Wikipedia, we can take a look at some of the other things that he's responsible for. Uh, the Prince of Wales Opera House in 1872. Also 1872, the Eastern Arcade in Burke Street, Melbourne. This is the North Melbourne Town Hall. So very similar um in all aspects, including the tower. The Theatre Royal in Adelaide. The Metropolitan Meat Market in North Melbourne with all those mud flooded windows. This is an interesting one. I'm gonna to have to come back to this. The Hospital for Incurables in 1881. Beautiful building. Town Hall in Dalesford. Collingwood, as we're discussing. The Criterion Theatre in Sydney. Ah, annexes. Annexes to the Exhibition Building in Melbourne in 1888. Good Lord, look at the size of all that. Northcote Town Hall in Melbourne, Fitzroy Town Hall, which is very high up off the ground there, isn't it? Maryborough in Victoria. The Bijou Theatre in Burke Street, Melbourne. Town Hall in Kilmore, Victoria. And one that they have on the bottom of the list, which they for some reason don't have an image of, so I found this one from Heritage Perth, the Theatre Royal in Perth. So he's come to Perth as well. Fascinating building, this one. Heavily photoshopped. You can actually see the outlines where they've cut out the sky on this one. So totally photoshopped. What's this down here? Something underneath it. How many floors below there? So this was the Theatre Royal and the Hotel Metropole because the same as in um, His Majesty's, they built a theatre and a hotel together, ironically around the same time. So I don't know why we needed so many in Perth, given how small the population was, but we had lots of hotels and lots of theatres. So here is an interesting image from... The Collingwood Historical Society. There's your construction image, which doesn't look fake or photoshopped at all. And yes, that's sarcasm. In 1886. And that's all we have there. And I don't know what the deal is with this photo, but this is laying the foundation stone. I'm not sure what happened to this guy's head. But look at the pixelation around these people. So something is completely cut out behind there. And I don't know if this gantry or whatever it is has just been added in. Quite likely these people have been added in as well. So that's from 1885. So this is our official history. And I'll leave you links to all of these in the comments. I don't think there's anything else we need to know there. Interestingly, there is another Collingwood in Canada as well with another fancy town hall. 
who'd have guessed? I'm just going to slot in here too a, a bit of an example of other buildings that were going on in that 10 year period around the Collingwood Town Hall being built. And these are just commercial buildings or public buildings. None of this is domestic, so there was all that going on as well at the same time. So I did take a little bit of a wander on Google. There really wasn't a lot to spot and they've covered up the bottom of it very well. Um, just check if there's any other good images before we wrap up. That's quite nice, isn't it? Don't know how legit that photo is. Oh, and it has, of course, the beautiful great hall in it. And from this page, I couldn't find out much more about, notice, maximum capacity 10 as of the 18th of June. Thank you, COVID. How ridiculous this world has become. Um, just gives us a little bit of a look inside. So uh, looks like it could have had an opening roof or still does. Um, and I'd say a little bit dressed down than what it used to be. Beautiful nonetheless. No organ to speak of. The extent of what they've destroyed is a little bit alarming. So I'll leave you the link to the um, video if you want to take a look. It's quite in depth, talks about these guys, uh, what did I note about them? It's narrated by Larry, and that's Larry here I believe. Uh, he's a third generation plasterer from Ireland. Uh, they make a lot of their own tools by hand. So the urns were taken away in 1934 and remade from moulds from the North Melbourne Town Hall urns and some requiring up to six to 17, 16 to 17 moulds for each piece. Total of seven to eight years in renovating. And I think that's about it. You may want to have a look. That's all I have for you today. Thanks for joining me. Talk to you again soon. Stay well, folks. Bye.